I have a lot of really cool friends who do a lot of really cool things. I wanted to make it a goal to sit down with these friends and spend about 15 minutes or so getting to know them better and find out about their past, present, and their future. The result is this show. My name is Grant Pachoco, and this is 15 Minutes With. Michael Rayner is one of the hardest working men in the entertainment industry, and that is no lie. You do it all. You do live shows, you do television, you do uh, sitcom warm-up, you do everything. Welcome to the show. Ah, thank you. Uh, what is the official name of the show? I don't even know the official it's name. It's 15 of the... Minutes With. That's right. that's the. But I don't ever stick to 15 I might, minutes. On I that's... might go 15 and a half. That's, that's, <laughs> that's I have fine. duration on my side. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yes, uh, Grant said it all uh, succinctly and correctly the third time around. Um, and what it is is uh, I believe in making my fortune not by one show for $20,000, uh, just doing volume. I believe in volume. I do a lot of shows at libraries. I sometimes will do warm up on sitcoms. Sometimes I get, I just I had a t- I have had about sixty TV commercials. It's all volume, and it's uh, that's that's how it works. One of the things I think is great, though, when I was thinking about what you do, is a lot of the times you I would I, maybe I'm wrong. But you make a lot of money just doing your act, and what's so great is your act is so unique and it's so you, and you can kind of do it anywhere. Uh, could you describe your act? Yes, for people who you know have- I kind of you know I sort of call myself a postmodern vaudevillian. Sometimes for like li- library shows, I call it the found object juggling show, but it's doing weird tricks that are not um, traditional tricks. Like I spin a cheeseburger on an umbrella. I balance. Uh, audience shoes on my nose and if I can't uh, they get uh, they get uh, five dollars but if it's the kid show they get a dollar because kid shows are much tougher and I lose on kids more than I do on the adults uh, I do a trick with a tennis racket cigar boxes uh, you know I balance a wheelbarrow on my chin uh, and also stand up stuff and a lot of improv with the audience so you know a lot of times the structure the skeletal tricks are the same at every show but whatever happens with me getting shoes from the audience you know, sometimes I have weird people's insoles falling out, or uh, sometimes I did this just this weekend, a huge black boot. And I said, oh, Frankenstein's here. Who's this dude's shoe? And a woman said, that's mine. <laughs> it was a lady shoe. <laughs> so. um, well, that's uh, – you – you there is a I've seen your act a bunch of times there it, no act is ever the same uh in terms of uh, what you say and and you're riffing with the audience it's it's very fun do you have a background in improv like did you take improv classes or you know I don't know if I took improv but it's just the volume of shows <laughs> where I did a lot of amusement park shows I worked with Sack Theater which Wayne Brady was part of and Jonathan Mangum and Joel McCrary who's out here um they're based out of Orlando Florida and I hosted a ton of their shows um, so I've been around improv forever, um, but I never officially took classes, but just show, 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 <laughs> and uh, whatever happens, and you have some other weird thing that you might say for whatever happens. And then you bank it, and then yeah. you say it again. Yeah. Uh, when did you, uh, where, where did you start? Where, did you, where are you from? I am from a small town called Goodrich, Michigan. It's very close to Flint, Michigan, which we're going to try to go back and do some fundraiser shows and bring some water. Because I don't know if you know, uh, Flint, <laughs> they don't have water right now. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, so uh, s- small town in, in Michigan. And there was an, a place in an amusement park called Auto World where that's why I started. Uh, very first show, though, I do remember my very first paid performance. It was at a country fair in Nortonville, Michigan. And they said, do you have any talent? And I said, I do. They said, sign up for the talent show. I did five minutes of dumb things, and I got $25. <laughs> so that was your first paid gig. That was my gig. first paid gig. But where did you where did you get the idea? Like, what were your influences to start trying to do this? Oh, uh, interesting. You know, like vaudeville stuff. Um, having a 1.97 grade point average, <laughs> uh, being completely ineffectual in every other place, not being able to look people in the eye. Uh, I went to a, a play in my senior year called Sugar Babies. It was with Ann Miller and Mickey Rooney. And in that play was a uh, phenomenal juggler, Michael Davis, who people might know. He had several appearances on Saturday Night Live and other things. And that was kind of interesting. And so I just started practicing because I had no other skills to survive on. 
And so is all your juggling and stuff, that's all self-taught? You just taught yourself? Uh, self-taught and a little bit of reading books. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this is way before YouTube. Yeah. Oh, he's got a walker and a cane. <laughs> oh, no, he's so old, Grandpa. Uh, yeah, just self-taught, figure stuff out. And I realized some of my tricks, um, actually, I do them differently. Like when I spin the cheeseburger on the umbrella, I use one hand and then I watched people that actually do umbrella spinning with like balls. They will use two hands, and I kind of taught myself a, a more a better way that I can just do it with one hand. So eventually, I could do two umbrellas at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes, if you teach yourself, you sometimes can happen upon better ways of doing things. Right. You know that's why it's like always doing exactly what you read in the book is not necessarily the best yeah how often do you do you like uh do you work on a new trick like are you doing it pretty regularly or well it all it's a weird thing like the shoe balancing that's a trick that i probably could have done for 20 years but i just thought about it like two years ago at the tomorrow show this ron lynch show and um and i started betting the audience i could balance their shoe on my nose for seven seconds if i can't uh, they get uh, five dollars. Mm -hmm. First, it was Girl Scout cookies, um, because that's I was selling Girl Scout cookies for my daughter at the time. But then it became five dollars. And if it's a bigger show, then I'll make a big point of like it's then uh, ten dollars or twenty bucks or something. Now, what's uh, another fun thing about you is you have been on uh, just a you've performed in a lot of amazing places. You performed on David Letterman. You performed on Sesame Street. You performed at the Tokyo Dome in Japan. You I know, performed. and Grant was with me. I was with you. But, uh, like, how great is that to get to do all these things, but doing something you created as opposed to, oh, I'm on this show and I have to read lines that somebody else wrote? Oh, you know, that uh, that is great. I mean, and one of the other things that was really fun was uh, the juxtaposition of humiliation and satisfaction where I went to Wyoming to perform for a showcase of, hey, do you want to come do fairs? And um, the... Cowboys in Wyoming didn't get me. They didn't understand what I was doing. They were like, I don't understand how that's a show. I come down slightly dejected. I had to stay up there four days to not get any shows. And then I auditioned for Tim Robbins Theater Company. He really digs me, do a bunch of shows with him. Then Norman Lear from All in the Family sees me, uh, loves me, and has me out to his house to perform for all his friends for a LACMA benefit. And... Um, it's just weird. It's like super great. It's it's my show. I've done it tons of places, gone to many uh, weird venues. Um, and uh, uh, it's great and yet infuriating sometimes. And this is the infuriating part is like uh, I do so much and yet I still feel like nobody knows me and who cares. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I still feel like I'm just always working it. Like my, my good friend uh, Drew Lynch who was just – he was second place on America's Got Talent, and he was my ticket taker at my kid's show, Two Milk Minimum. And I'm thrilled about his success, but I realize it, you can get success at 24. Like, uh, he's like, he's super young. Or you can just have a steady career. I've had 30 years of just making money for my family, but never getting those, you know, half a million dollar years. I'm like, I average, if you average all my time in LA, some years a bunch, some years a little. I average fifty thousand dollars a year. That's my average for twenty years. Yeah, and so so it's like, it's infuriating. Like, well, people like me enough, but when am I going to get the big paydays? Maybe it'll never come. Yeah. I don't know. What now? Let's talk. Uh, I want to talk about a show like the Wyoming show. Oh, how great. do you? Let's let's really uh, delve in. No, but how do you? Because I've had those, and and um, I think you and I have even been together on a few shows that probably, probably have wound up like that. But how do you? as an artist, like, get back up there? I mean, I know everyone says, oh, you have to get back up there. but Well, I love humiliation more than anything else because <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I ever did any tricks at all. I always feel, I feel like I'm in a constant state of humiliation anyways. That's why people don't understand why I don't get angry when kids are yelling at me at, me at my kids' show. It's just that, that's the state that I like because then you can figure out what things you can do. Uh, I did the Wyoming thing. I was balancing a wheelbarrow on my face. They were like, well, that's for that's for farming. I don't know why you're balancing a wheelbarrow. That's a farm tool. And it, and then, like, the, like uh, I had to sit in a room for four days while cowboys looked at me and said, I do not want that. And yet I know that it's, it's, it's enjoyable. It's bizarre. It's enjoyable because yeah. I know I'll come back to L.A. and then something else happens. Good. Yeah. There's going to be the yin and yang of it. 
Yeah. There, I, I, gosh, I, I mean, there's so many. Uh, there's just terrible shows, and then great shows. Well, what I always like about you too is you're very good at having a not not that you don't have a lot of terrible shows, but you have you know you have a bad show, but then turning it into comedy later on, like. You know, like you were talking about the was it the kids in Calabasas or something. It's just like a <laughs> oh, hor- or, or, yes, like a horrible show. I I I do every show. There's no show I will not say no. I, I will say no to. I uh, maybe 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 like uh, like uh, maybe like the Klan rally. <laughs> I will maybe not go juggle for the Klan rally. Yeah. Um, but there's this outdoor mall in Calabasas, and I've done this show probably 15 times over the last 20 years. No one seems to care that I'm there when I'm performing. They just seem really, they're just, they, they don't seem to be able to have any sense of joy in Calabasas. And that's where the Kardashians are from. <laughs> so I think we've really seen how they really have very little joy. Yeah. They have a monotone sadness that is built upon having everything. So there's no sense of wonder in their lives. And then I'll go to a show in Compton or, or in, or like the Burbank libraries, they love me. I'm like the super celebrity when I go to the Burbank libraries. Calabasas, not so much. Let's talk uh, a little about your commercials because uh, oh. you've done a lot of commercials. Uh, can you name some of the stuff yeah. you've done? Uh, Energizer Battery was really fun because it was me spliced in with actual Elvis and uh, it was just super amazing when it came out because it looked cool and I, had a, I was in a commercial with Elvis then I, my very first commercial in L.A. was a disaster. It was non-union because when I got here, I wasn't Screen Actors Guild. I wasn't SAG. And I got hired, and then they said, okay, this is the car you're going to be driving and stopping. And I said, but it's a stick shift. I've never driven a stick shift. I said, well, yeah, I just sort of popped a clutch and try to hit that bumper in front of you, <laughs> but don't hit it and let the bumper fall off. And it was a nightmare. And I thought, that's it. I'm never doing another commercial again. That was the first one. The second one... I get cast in like uh, seven spots for a commercial, and one of the spots we have to fly up to Vancouver and hang out with Ringo Starr, and do so do a, a, I get to hang out with a Beatle and do a commercial with a Beatle and meet him. So it's like first commercial disaster, second commercial with a Beatle, and that's how it always goes back and forth, back and forth. And then Elvis, you only do commercials with legends. Of I know, rock and, and roll. I also uh, did a commercial for Frank Sinatra's compilation CD when he was still alive. And rumor has it he approved me to be in his spot. I awesome. spun a donut on an umbrella. They said Doug Van Dandel, Doug Van Andel has a gift. Do you have a gift? Try, it. and then they talk about his Frank Sinatra's CDs. Yeah. Uh, so I. I uh, tried to audition for commercials for two years, and I got nothing. What What do you think is, like, what's your advice? Like, if someone's going to go audition for a commercial, what advice would you give? Well, for me, and I don't know if this works for other people, when I go into the audition room, I try to not think of anything in my brain, absolutely strip everything out of my brain, and then... Uh, whatever I think to do, I do. It's in the in improv game. Try to have absolutely zero um, preconceived notions. You know what I mean? Um, and and it could just be my, my dopey face. I have a dopey face. Uh, you know? I don't know what it is. If you go to michaelrainer.com, I've got a few of my commercials uh, up there. You know, I did one with Neil Patrick Harris where they uh, – where they uh, took my arm and made it my leg and my leg into my arm. And my favorite part is when we were doing the effect, I had to lay flat out with my arm where my leg is and they had to do these counterweight moves and they just looked at me and said, listen, don't try to get up right now because the counterweights, if you tried to get up, it's going to smack you and knock you and maybe kill you. (laughs) And so that was my, my stunt. I did my own stunt. Yeah. Talking about stunts, you... One thing I always know because I follow you on Instagram, I follow you on Twitter, is that you will go to the gym to practice your oh, tricks. I was there today. <laughs> yeah. And even though I'm old, I hit a milestone for me because as Grant seen my show, and I'm not a, uh, an incredibly technical juggler, but I do like to practice some technical stuff. And for me, um, juggling rings, I always want to do more and more and more. And I got to 50 throws and 50 catches, which for me, that's my own. Like, there's guys that can do that forever. But for me, that was a a personal best today. So I did a personal best today in my old age. And so it was very exciting. And so I was there today. My favorite time at the gym practicing was once I was practicing. 
there were two dudes doing some little Muay Thai boxing where where they hit each other in the shins. And then there were a couple girls working on some dance moves because no one's in the gym. You can do whatever you want. Then another girl comes to the door and she looks in and she looks at me and she goes, is this a class? It's my favorite all time moment in the gym. Did you say yes? I said yes. And tomorrow it's going to be sushi making, rolla bola and Diablo work. But uh, how important is practice? I mean, because you do a lot of shows a week, but still you go in and practice. I practice more for me because in my show, it's tricks that I know how to do. In the practice, it's tricks that I can't do. You know what I mean? And tricks that uh, maybe someday might be in the show, might not be in the show. And it's just uh, it's just to keep my brain. Um, hopefully, I've read some uh, like science journals, and they said that juggling helps keep your brain fresh and alive and uh, working back and forth. So I do it for me, you know? Yeah. One thing I like in the shows that we've done, especially the Two Milk Minimum shows, is you are – and I, I don't seem to have this. You, you are not afraid to say what's going on in the room, you know, or um, the, the th- maybe I'm not saying that right. But the, the th- example I'm coming to mind is there was a little kid who wanted to eat on the floor. Yeah. Like bring his oh, plate down to the yes. floor. And the mom was like, don't eat on the floor. And then you just started yelling. at them. I yelled at the mom. I'm yeah. saying, hey, helicopter parent. They can eat on the floor. Have you not ever had a snack mat in front of the TV? And the mom just looked at me like, No. Like what are you what are you talking about? And so I was I was trying to let them eat on the floor, and the mom was having none of it. But what what I'm saying is like in shows, like you had no fear saying that to the mom. You know no. what I mean? Like well, like where does that come know. from? I don't know because it's like I just think that's funny and interesting, and and like uh, I think like the other one show during the summer. This little girl, she was kind of like being a little bratty. This was at a camp show. At, at, it was a two milk show, but it was for camps. And she just goes, my dad's a city councilman. And she was like so into her dad being a city councilman. So I just said, my dad's in an urn. <laughs> and I've just told the audience that my father's dead in our garage. And and all of a sudden I noticed the camp council were like, huh, that was funny. There's something weird going on. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like, I hate, this is the shows I hate is like, Hey, boys and girls, are you ready to do some learning? Hey, boys and girls, are you ready to talk about sharing? Yeah. Like, I'm just ready for rough and tumble good time. No, well, and that's what's great. It's like those two moments, because uh, I think I was there at the Urn, oh, were you? The you Urn been. show as yeah. well. But like those like those are so, like they were hilarious. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny because I would never say those things, but if I, you know, like, you know what I mean? It's hilarious. Like well, the, the truth is funny. Well, the, the other week, um, like I get suggestions from the audience to do my tennis record trick in ways I've never thought of, and they give me uh, give me tricks to do, and I so I try so I try to do this thing where a kid said, "Go under your legs 15 times." So I'm going under my legs 15 times. I'm getting really tired, and then all of a sudden I I, I kind of actively fart on stage, <laughs> and I said, "I just farted on that guy. He gets a dollar because he was in the fart zone." And then I said, "Anybody gets farted on gets a dollar," and then all of a sudden all the kids rush to the stage. <laughs> I want to get farted on. So to me, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, you've created a new, uh, a it's new like trick. Sea, it's like SeaWorld. It's like the splash zone. It's the fart zone. You get to paint the chairs brown, I guess. That's I right. Don't, That's yeah. right. Um, how do you, you – know, you're also a writer. Uh Somewhat. Somewhat. I mean, you've written things. I've written, you know, that's the weird thing. You know, I've written many things, and I once sold a, a pilot to Nickelodeon, and then I wrote some pop up video stuff for the Game Show Network. And then I, like, I wrote a spec script for the Larry Sanders show that got me a meeting at CBS. But, you know, once we had kids, I, I still dabble, but it's just harder to have those focused, you know, three hours because. Yeah. When you're you're trying to really focus in, like when I practice or go do my shows, I'm away from the family. But when I'm at home, I don't want to say, hey, uh, kids, don't uh, bother me now because I'm in the zone for three hours while I try to think of funny things to say on this piece of paper. So it's a little bit more difficult, but I still try to brush things up and still have things available. As a creative person, do you keep like a um, idea journal or do you keep notes on your phone? Or? I do a little bit of everything. Like I have so many scraps of paper with things. And then I try to keep a little sketchbook where I write down the daily lists of what has to get done during the day. And then also um, like I'll, I'll, I'll do a little like uh, like little words like, oh, this might be interesting in this show. And then I'll try it in the show later on. Um, you know, just a little like, talk about this idea. I don't ever write. You know, I rarely, I mean, if I try to write joke jokes, I'll try to just throw them on Twitter because I'm not a joke joke guy. I'm like a input 
uh, uh, people input things during the show and then I say things after they say things to me. Um, so I don't think I'm a joke guy. I'd like to be. You know, Brian Kiley, one of my favorite uh, joke joke guys, he's right around Conan. I do, I've done many shows with him. The, if you want to know about joke jokes, Brian Kiley, he's number one on that. He's the guy. Well, I was gonna. that's funny because I was just going to ask you, uh, who's somebody that people should check out that maybe they don't know about? And it could e- either be now, today, or in the past, or, you know. Who's well, at my show, uh, I've been doing a show down at Buena Park called Teatro Martini, and I do cigar box tricks, which is like old-timey juggling, and I always talk about W.C. Fields. Before people knew he was in the movies, he did crazy juggling stuff. And so if you can go find some of his little interstitial stuff, that's really fun and weird. There's also, if you want to go back, like uh, original Steve Martin, before being a movie star, I saw him live at Pine Knob in uh, in, in uh, Michigan, and uh, I was in the Steve Martin fan club for uh, like a year. Uh, I have uh, uh, all this original stuff from when he, he first burst onto the scene. That was, I think he him and Steve Martin and Michael Davis were the three, W.C. Field, Steve Martin, Michael Davis. Those are the, when I was a young 14 year old, were the influences. Later on, I think, you know, then just like just for the rough and tumble, crazy, wild uh, jokes are just like the David Tells today I like. But then there's the clean Jim Gaffigans, you know, I think the, as much as there's a, I, I, there's just so many people that I think are great, you know, and then even locally, um, you know, you can see Brian Kiley at like Flapper sometimes or places around here, you know, so. So those, I think those are enough for right now. But really, there's just so many. Yeah. Well, if people want to check you out, where can they go? I mean, you mentioned MichaelRainer.com. It's MichaelRainer.com, R-A-Y-N-E-R. There's also Broken Juggler is Twitter and Instagram. And um, I will be at Flappers Comedy Club 430 on Saturdays pretty much all the time. Always check the website, though, the Flappers website, because I'm once in a while I go out of town. All right. Well, Michael, thank you so much for talking to me today. I appreciate it. Awesome. See you soon. Michael Rayner was the guest on this episode of 15 Minutes With. Learn more about Michael and see video clips of his act over at michaelrayner.com. You can also follow him on Twitter and Instagram by searching the name Broken Juggler, all one word. Huge thanks to Michael Rayner for taking the time to talk to me here on the Grantcast. 15 Minutes With on the Grantcast is a production of Saturday Morning Media and is made possible in part by the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who have gone to www.patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up a monthly donation for as little as a dollar a month. Huge thanks to Shea Stewart, Mer Lafferty, Jeff Peterson, Dale Gadania, Stephen Staver, Jackie Klimo, Melissa Crawford, Chuck, Matthew Wayne Selznick, Dave Slusher of the Evil Genius Chronicles, Mike Coughlin, Dorothy Bachoco, John D., Kathy Crawford, Brian Greer, Carrie Whitney, Chuck Tomasi, Chris Foster, Stephen Ng, Clinton of ComedyForecast.com, Vicki DeVries, and Mike Wabshaw. If you'd like to support this show and the other fun content from Saturday Morning Media, become a patron. Head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media today and set up your donation. That's www.patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media, all one word. Or you can tell a friend about the show or leave us a review on iTunes. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back soon with another episode of The Grantcast. The Grantcast is copyright 2016 Saturday Morning Media, Grant Pachoco, executive producer, all rights reserved www.saturdaymorningmedia.com